Last week, we did a review on NoLoco, a front-end and back-end no-code application. And this week, we're excited to announce that they've now released their integration to SmartSuite. So in this video, we're going to spend some time setting up the connection with SmartSuite so that you can connect to the apps and solutions that you have. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, a SmartSuite and NoLoco implementation partner. I'm starting off in SmartSuite and I'm using a solution template. This one is just a single project template. You can recreate this on your own. You can duplicate this so that you've got access to it. The reason I chose this template is because one of the apps that's already set up is for staffing. And for this staffing, we have contacts of people that we presumably want to be users inside of our application in no loco. So I think this is a really good one to get started with. But of course, you're able to create your own solutions as well. So you're not restricted to a certain set of templates. There's just a couple modifications that I made to this that you'll want to be aware of. One is in this staffing template, the name was just the primary field here. And we actually need to make sure for our users table that we have both a first and last name. So I split this out into first name, last name, and then we also need that email address. The email was there already, so we're good to go on that front. And then the other thing I did on the tasks table, because we're going to focus on tasks that are assigned to these individuals on the staffing app, is inside of tasks, there's an owner field which is assigned to a user of the system, but we actually want to assign these tasks to that staffing table. Because we don't want to have the users directly mapped, we want to be able to have the ability to have additional fields and things like that from this app. So because of that, I added a field that I called resource, and this is just a linked record field, and I connected to that staffing app. Inside of NoLoco, the first thing that we're going to do is connect to our data source as we're building our new application. So we're going to choose from SmartSuite, and we can give a unique app name. I'm just going to give this a demo name here for a second, and we've got our subdomain here. Let's go ahead and build our app. Next, you'll need to connect with SmartSuite so you can authenticate. And then you're going to choose your workspace and your solution that you want to connect to. And I'm giving this a name. And the nice part is, is that you can actually connect multiple data sources. So you could actually have multiple solutions presented in one no loco application. All right, this next step might take a couple minutes to load, but this is where some of the magic happens that as it's actually connecting and going through all of the different apps in your solution, it's optimizing it so that you're not gonna have to build this experience entirely from scratch. So check out how cool this is. As soon as we press that button to create it, it added all of our navigation on the left-hand side. It even found icons to choose from. If you click through it, you'll see that we've got a Kanban here. We have a project overview, which has a nice little screen here to it. We've got our staffing where we've got a view here of lists of records. So you can see that it's pretty intentional about setting this up. If you want to be able to add a new record here, you can do so, and it already has a form built for you. So this is a really good way to get started so that you don't have to do everything by yourself. You can take what's already there and make the modifications that you need. There's a couple of things that I want to point out. So we have where we can actually build the screen here, but we also have our data. And this is a really important concept inside of NoLoco. So other front-end tools, it's just making a call in essentially real time back to SmartSuite to pull the information and display it on the front end. But what they're doing is they're actually loading it into a database inside of NoLoco so that you can see the refreshed data and what all actually exists inside of the system. And the part that I like about this is that we're able to go up and click on syncing, and this will tell us when we most recently synced. So if we have a field change, we'll know, did we actually sync it? And we can manually trigger a sync if that's out of date. So the reason I like this is because sometimes you're not actually sure if something has grab the latest changes. And to be able to trigger that on your own, I think is really valuable. I also like how this is set up because from a performance standpoint, because the data is actually now living inside of NoLoco, it's very performant when you're trying to load it on the front end as a user. Now, one of the things that might be a little bit confusing if you're doing this for the first time is the concept of that user's table because in NoLoco, they have their own user's construct, which is set up here. You can see NoLoco tables and they have the user and that's not currently matched to that staffing table that we have, which we can see if we click down here, which has all of the data that we're loading in from SmartSuite. So what we need to do is on our left-hand navigation, we can click on users. And this is where if we click on these ellipses up here, we can sync our users. And this will tell us where we should pull that table of users information from. So here I'm going to create a new user list. And we're just going to call this staff. And we can tell it now of these tables that we pulled in, 
what are we mapping it to? And again, it's really cool because you can have multiple data sources. So you could have it be from different solutions. In this case, we just have our main project that's set up here. So we'll pull from staffing. And this is where I mentioned before that we'll want to make sure that we have an email, a first name, and a last name. And then here we can say, should all users be included? And I really like that we have this option because oftentimes as a best practice when we're designing databases inside of SmartSuite, we recommend having like one table of contacts, not to have contacts for your customers and contacts for your partners and contacts for your internal users. Instead, having one contacts table and then having a type, having a single select where you can differentiate and segment those users. So what that means on the no loco side is you could say of a contacts table that you have, we only want a certain subset of those to become users inside a no loco. And given the fact that you're paying for this on a per seat basis, it's really important that you're managing that user count. So I'm going to have all of my users included, but we could toggle this off to have certain conditions where only the staff that are of a status of employee are going to be included here. We'll include all of them for now. We can also assign user roles, and this is gonna help with things like permissions and visibility of who can do what inside of the system. Once we save that, you might need to wait a minute or two and refresh, but then we're able to see that now all of our users have synced over. So this is coming from that table that we have inside of our data of staffing. We can see all the information here, but now we can make sure that these are in fact users who are going to access the NoLoco application. So coming back to our application, let's do a little bit of light editing to get a flavor for what this is like. Down here, you see that we've got this build mode, which we can toggle on. And the thing I really like about this is that it doesn't change the experience really between editing and accessing the application. It's going to feel very similar. So we're on our project tasks right here. We've got a Kanban for it. And presumably we would want to say, you know, maybe I want to only have users be able to see their own tasks as opposed to all of the tasks that we have in the application. So I'm going to click on this. This is going to open up our different settings that we can see on the left hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and add a filter here. And in this filter, we're going to say if that logged in user and they're going to be connected via the staff here and a link to the project tasks collection. This is kind of a lot of information to process, but essentially we're saying the staff table, the users that we have, if they link to that project tasks collection, then they can see that information. Now we've added that filter and it says nothing can be found. Well, because I'm logged in essentially as myself and I'm not assigned any of those tasks. So this is where it's really helpful to see, hey, let's look at another user. So if we look at SmartSuite here, we've got Camilla and we want to be able to see her information. So let's look at this as if we were her, her and we can click on that user. It's going to reload and now we can see her tasks. So this is a great feature to be able to impersonate other users so that you can make sure that as you apply different user roles or they're just different people with different filters that you know that they're gonna see the experience that you're intentionally trying to craft for them. Other things we can do here, we've got visibility settings. So we could say, maybe I only want this page accessible to certain individuals. Is it only internal users or clients? Could we say it's certain people with these roles? We didn't set up a user role for this example, but we could limit that. Or we could even add our own custom roles depending on attributes of that logged in user. If it matches this, now they can actually see this page. And then presumably you'll want to be able to add your own pages to the application. Of course, it does a great job of getting you started, but if you wanna add new ones, I found this a little bit tricky. You have to kind of hover over here and you'll see a little plus icon to add the page to the navigation. So you can choose from a collection that you have, again, the, the lists of records that you have in your application, or you can choose from these advanced. I love how you have the ability to have like a nested folder to be able to group how you want your navigation. You can have external links. We're just gonna create a blank page here and we can give this a name and everything else, choose an icon. This is where you're gonna be able to see your different components that you can add to the page. You can add videos, action buttons. So you really have a lot of configurability when it comes to this. One of the things I'd recommend doing if you're building the application for the first time, even if you're connecting it to your SmartSuite data, is just create an extra application to give you some ideas of what's possible with the layouts because they're really powerful. And I think that these templates are really well put together. So if you're doing something like inventory management, maybe spin this up, even though it's not available as a SmartSuite template per se, just connect it to no loco tables and you can see 
oh yeah, we've got a pretty good layout. And then you can start to mimic some of those components on the page. Now there's lots of advanced functionality that we probably can't get to in an intro video like this. But one thing I'd recommend taking a look at is because the data exists here and we can say when a project task record is created, and because it lives in this database, this is a way that you can actually augment SmartSuite's own automations that they have. And so I'd take a look at things like triggering a webhook. This is something that we don't have the ability to do exactly the way we want to today. So if you need certain kinds of automations, you want to tap into OpenAI, there's a lot of things that you can do on top of the base level functionality of setting up your application. Now, you'll also want to navigate to your settings because there's some key things that you'll want to set up as you're getting started. One is going to be your app settings here. You'll want to add a logo, change the title to something that makes sense. You can have a favicon here. Theme and design, you've got some coloration options to be able to have it match the brand of your organization. You can connect your own domain so it feels like people are logging into your fully branded application here. And you can manage those login and sign up preferences. They've got magic link, email password, authentication with Google. So there's lots of different options to be able to set that up. I really love that No Loco has versioning. So you can add a description for this version. You can roll back if you need to make those changes. And when you're ready to go live, you can publish your application. And once you start using the application, all of that data is synced back and forth with SmartSuite. So if we make a change here and we say, our task is done, it's going from ready for review and we're going to complete. Then that data here, budget development, ready for review, that's going to update that status for us. I hope this was helpful to see how you can use NoLoco with SmartSuite to create that front end for your clients or your partners or your contractors that you're working with. Now, of course, there's a little bit of a learning curve to NoLoco. So if you have any questions in getting up and running, feel free to reach out to automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.